Is my life worth living? Yes, of course, right? That's everyone's initial reaction. But if we are pressed about the answers we initially reach for, they often tend to pull apart. You might console a friend, telling them that life is worth living because of love, thinking of your significant other. But what if no one has ever loved them that way? What about being told that life is about raising a family, but then you find out that you can't bear children? These are difficult realities, but they cannot be swept under the rug. What they expose is that the meaning of life is not this or that one reason. Albert Camus is a 20th century French writer and philosopher who forces us to face a question that no one wants to confront. He believed that the real question we should ask ourselves, is my life worth living? And if so, why? In doing so, he believes we can, although it is difficult, start to piece together a more authentic and resilient purpose for our own lives. Considered to be the father of absurdism, a philosophical movement built around the absurd indifference of the reality we live in, Camus reimagined the task of philosophy in a more consolatory and therapeutic sense. He believed it was definitive action that should be the goal and result of philosophical work, not merely beliefs. This is primarily because Camus did not think that there was any objective meaning to be deduced through logic and argumentation. Camus sees this question of meaninglessness as a natural response to the underlying reality, namely, that life is absurd. It is absurd to continually seek meaning in life when there is none, and it is absurd to hope for some form of life after death because this is our extinction. But Camus also thinks it is absurd to try to know, understand, or explain the world, since he regards the attempt to gain rational knowledge as pointless. Here, Camus pits himself against science and traditional philosophy, dismissing the claims of all forms of rational conclusion. The universal reason, those categories that explain everything, are enough to make a decent man laugh. Our ordinary day-to-day -day life is held together by a set of beliefs that are typically handed to us when we are children, and when these face the real world they can cause pain and confusion as they fail to explain it. Think of the disappointing realities faced in one's 20s as we are forced to reconcile the real world with the explanations we carry into it. Narratives such as, if you work hard, you will succeed, or a good deed is always met with reward. Real life reveals to us, like a swift punch to the gut, that none of these simple answers has any real world truth. Without an understanding of who we are, hard work can easily be wasted at a soul-sucking job. Another French thinker, Jean-Paul Sartre, wrote in his novel Nausea, which Camus praised, about how the absurd nature of reality reveals itself to us in the day-to-day. -day. He wrote, The stage sets collapse. Rising, streetcar, four hours in the office or the factory, meal, streetcar, four hours of work, meal, sleep, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday according to the same rhythm. What kind of narrative could really justify such a fate for this one life we have on Earth? What kind of grand purpose would give rise to billions of people condemned to such a pointless cycle? For Camus, there is no grand purpose. When we reach out to the universe through religion or science, we are met with infinite silence, a hostile indifference that has no answers to our desperate cries for a why to explain our suffering. Camus reaches for several myths and vessels to work through in order to articulate what a solution might be in such a seemingly meaningless existence. The myth of Sisyphus, a work based on the Greek myth where Sisyphus is forced to roll a boulder up a hill only to find himself returning to the bottom and having to start over for all eternity, best encapsulates the human condition for Camus. We are forced to endure labors, to do things each and every day and not really have any control or choice. Like Sisyphus, the powers that have forced this existence on us are beyond our control and comprehension, and every completed day work is met with a morning that requires the start of another day of labor. Camus comes to distinguish himself from existentialists like Sartre by arguing that life can be argued from from a single concrete position. In The Rebel, he finally comes to offer a kind of solution. Its final conclusion is the repudiation of suicide and the acceptance of the desperate encounter between human inquiry and the silence of the universe. Since to conclude otherwise would negate its very premise, namely the existence of a person posing the question, us, absurdism must logically accept life as the one necessary good. To say that life is absurd, consciousness must be alive. 
Living and eating are themselves value judgments. To breathe is to judge. What Camus means is that even though we cannot find objective meaning from some supreme source, we can confirm the uniqueness of our own existence. The realization and acceptance of absurd existence is a mark of affirmation that opens the door to a more creative way of thinking. We may still be subject to daily action, but with the freedom that is seized in absurd acceptance, we can also free ourselves from the opinions of others about how we should live our life. Since life is absurd, any firm commitment about how we all should live is no viable source and is ultimately nonsense. Our own personally crafted sense of purpose and meaning can then be built with enthusiasm, authenticity, and most importantly, freedom. This solution can be life-changing, but the difficulty of such a task cannot be understated. The first task in approaching the problem of our purpose in life is to wean ourselves off of something we rely on, a narrative or belief that blinds us to harsh realities. Some people adopt fixed political or religious beliefs that paint the world in a way that they can understand. But historically, these positions always end up excluding groups of people from human consideration and lead to violence in the face of contradictions. In other words, if you adopt one of the political positions set out on the table, you are immediately setting yourself up to face a world that does not look like that. Your life will be frustrating, full of arguments, and never bring the type of peace and happiness you really want. Not making any decision is equally damaging. When we hold no beliefs because we're too cowardly to confront the world as it actually is, we are forced to live a life of distractions. We become dependent on alcohol, parties, vacations, and social media life construction to maintain an illusion of what the world is. This requires constant upkeep and ultimately blocks us off from discovering who we are and what we want. For the absurd man, it is not a matter of explaining and solving, but of experiencing and describing. Everything begins with lucid indifference. Our lives begin, write their pages, and end in the absurd. Our politics is absurd. Our tax system is absurd. Our wars are absurd. Our education system is absurd. Our relationships, desires, hatred, fears, tears, all of it is absurd when you really stop and think about it for even a moment. The second we let go of this opinion or prideful assumption, we realize how ridiculous it all is. But this is exactly when you start to see how absolutely magnificent it is too. To embrace life not just for a handful of good things that you pay attention to, or to ignore the bad things and pretend they don't exist, but with all of the good and bad rolled into it. This is when we can start accepting not just the world, but our lives for what they are. You can learn to love and accept yourself because at the end of the day there are no right or wrong turns, but at least now we can begin to take turns on our own terms. We can pursue careers and dreams we want intrinsically, not because some social pressure or family members say we should. But what do you think? Part of the takeaway here is that meaning turns from a belief of conviction into a kind of crafted narrative. Through conversation and dialogue, we can both understand each other and ourselves better. So please express your thoughts in the comments section so we can help each other understand more about this absurd existence. If you are interested in more videos about how philosophy can be a therapy for life, we have plenty of them on our page covering topics from existentialism to self-confidence. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel for more. It helps us immensely. Visit the link in the comments to see how you can become a member of our community and support the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.